always find it really interesting when really old properties try to figure out how do we become relevant again in the modern day? How do you even modernize this type of gameplay? Do we keep it the same with new graphics? Do we make new gameplay entirely? Or do we experiment, elaborating on the existing mechanics in a new way? The latter is probably the most challenging, but usually the most rewarding approach. When Frogger came to PlayStation, that's the route they took. They kept the grid-based movement, but they added more to it and turned it into a platforming adventure game. It took them two tries to get it right, but Blitz Games made a pretty cool, albeit short, interpretation of what Frogger could now be. So the next step seems obvious, right? Let's continue to flesh out that sort of gameplay. There's still so much you can do with it. Make it a bit longer, maybe, and of course, heighten the quality even further now that we have new hardware to work with. Coming hot off of Swampy's Revenge, Blitz began working on a sequel, but Konami turned down their pitch, so they reworked their game to have an original character instead, so they were still able to release it. That project became Zapper. In a way, this is sort of like the true sequel to Swampy's Revenge. It was the same developer, the same type of game, except with improved graphics, more content, and new mechanics. As far as what Frogger could have become, this is pretty good. But I guess Konami was not interested in making more Frogger games in that style, at least not currently. With 3D platformers continuing to rise and arcade-like gameplay becoming less and less relevant, Konami instead decided to reboot the series entirely, reinventing Frogger from scratch. Blitz's offer was turned down, and Konami turned to their own in-house studio, Papa Yeti, instead. Well, I think they're an in-house team, at least. They seem to be an American branch within Konami? That's at least what the credits seem to imply to me. I couldn't really find much info about that studio, as they were very short-lived, but either way, it seems like Konami wanted to handle this Frogger game themselves, instead of outsourcing it a third time in a row. This time, they would take the Pac-Man world route, ditching that arcade style completely in favor of being a modern type of platformer. Well, as bummed as I am that they didn't let Blitz follow up on Frogger 2, I do like 3D platformers. However, this game is kind of surrounded in a ton of infamy. I'm always hearing about that terrible Frogger reboot, but I don't actually know anything about this game, other than the fact that everybody says it's bad, but people also told me Pac-Man World 3 was really bad, and I actually ended up liking a lot about that game, despite me not really liking some of the design choices, but uh, yeah, I guess I don't really know for sure until I try it myself now, huh? Let's see how this goes. It couldn't possibly be as bad as Hasbro's Frogger on PlayStation, right? Right? Oh dear lord, it better not be. Oh god, I'm scared now. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? That's an interesting title screen. I like how the options are on the scroll on the right. That's kind of cool. And the environment here is pretty pretty. Pretty pretty? <laughs> you know what I meant. Uh, but I don't know, man. That's what Frogger looks like in this game? That's, that's him? I guess they did a total redesign. He used to be a frog-looking frog, but now he's like a man-looking frog. I guess they just wanted the design to more closely resemble that of other platformers at the time, so they made him more human-like. I understand that decision, but this design just looks... I don't know. It looks something about, like, kind of... Like, how should I say this? It looks like it's from a bad DreamWorks movie. I, I think it's mostly in the expression, you know, the crossed arms, the smug face. Why does he keep sticking his tongue out? This, it's... No, stop. It's gross. Oh, I gotta name this save file. Um... Uh, Sure, that works. <laughs> Maybe that'll be telling of what's to come. Who knows? Okay, we get a pre-rendered cutscene of Frogger hanging out in a swamp with his buddy Lumpy the Toad. Lumpy the Toad looks... I don't like Lumpy the Toad. Uh, he explains that he's unhappy with living the same old boring life in the swamp. I want to zap new bugs, swim new streams, be frog loose and froggy free. After Lumpy tries to warn him about how dangerous the outside world is, Frogger overhears two children explaining that classic fairy tale of the princess and the frog. She picked up the frog and kissed what? it. Poof! The frog turned into a prince. This gives Frogger a disgusting frog boner? Is that what he's doing? What is his face? What is this? Man, I thought Frogger looked kind of weird. I swear, every character in this game is a damn eyesore. A lump in the toad looks like Jabba the Hutt if he grew, like, mold and moss all over him. Next time, they make us dinner. And, oh my god, the human characters don't even get me started. I, I think these are actually the ugliest 3D models of human characters I've ever seen in a PS2 game. At least from a AAA developer. Like, this is putrid looking. It looks like a video game adaptation of Angela Anaconda, except in color. And why does this kid sound like Tails? Who are you anyway? A goblin? Oh, this kid is Tails. Because of a terrible accident. After seeing a shooting star, Frogger wishes to find a princess that he can kiss and become a prince. I wish I may, I wish I must find a princess before I bust. Whoever wrote that line should go to prison. I, like, what, what does that mean? What is that supposed to mean? Don't answer that. We all know. Frogger's then visited by the fairy frog mother, who grants him three gifts to help him fulfill his wish. He can now see magical things, like uh, fairies and whatnot, he can now collect and interact with things that are magical, like runes and stuff, and he cannot 
die? Now you cannot die while in pursuit of Princess Hotlips. No, yeah, like, yeah, like, Frogger was just granted immortality? Why is this just like a throwaway detail? Frogger, you cannot die. You're immortal. You're invincible. What? I get that this is just like a story reason for why you die and come back, you know, explaining the game mechanics, but I didn't need a story reason to know why Rayman or Mario comes back after you die. It, it just turns it into this bonkers detail that the plot just glazes over like it's nothing. Casual immortality. Frogger then sets out on a great quest to find a princess he can smooch with his big disgusting frog lips. That's the plot. He, he just learns what a princess is and goes, yeah, I want that. This entitled little frog just thinks he gets to kiss a princess, as if anybody's gonna look at his disgusting Shrek looking ass and be like, that's hot. I don't care if you have magical powers or if you're immortal or anything like that. I, there's no way anybody is ever going to kiss this freaking abomination. And now we can start our quest. Uh, I didn't have to play the game very long before I started noticing a lot of similarities to Rayman 2, weirdly enough, the moveset's almost identical. You've got a hover move, you can climb up vines, and your main attack is a projectile, which you're able to fire at enemies while locked on, and you can strafe left and right. Even the swimming controls are similar, this is straight up Rayman 2. But uh, while they copied Rayman's moveset, they certainly didn't copy the degree of polish. <laughs> These controls are not good, they're really floaty and can be incredibly unresponsive. Sometimes landing on a simple platform is way more difficult than it should be. The jump propels you into the air way too high, way too fast, and the descent after the arc has no weight to it. You feel like a dang balloon. It's so hard not to overshoot every single thing you're aiming for, even with that hover move. All right, there we go. No, come on, please. I just, uh, no, I just, I just want to, can I, can I please, can I just, I just want to, I just want to get that coin, get, why, why is this so, come on, please. This happens so much. I really don't like this hover move, actually. You know, like plenty of games have thought up very creative ways of making your character descend slowly, whether it's flapping some wings, or a voodoo magic, or swinging a character around like a helicopter, or helicopter hair even. Frogger's version of this has him croaking? I think that's what he's doing. But like, like really big and holding it in so he's, he's like a balloon that, that floats. I think I understand the idea on paper here, but this looks really strange. The way he has to crane his head all the way back, how he holds his arms back, it looks like a phantom from hell coming to reap your soul, or an alien invading, it, like it's Frieza coming to take your toes or something. The weird sound it makes really brings that together. You know what, Glowbox, there's another frog-like character that's had a similar animation for the exact same move, but it did not look uncanny because they did it in a really goofy kind of way. This just looks, I don't know man, the posture and what he's doing with his throat and that sound effect for it too, I don't know, it's just really creepy. Speaking of creepy, oh my god dude, uh, okay so you know how you like eat bugs to get your health back, right? Because he's like a frog, you know, you press circle to lick up a bug, right? Okay, so I press the button so we can lick- You see a frog or a goddamn gremlin from hell, that's terrifying! And even worse, there are no moves that even use the tongue at all. Like, the most iconic things a frog can do is hopping around and licking stuff up, right? They had a move like that in the previous games, so why the hell opt out for this? You're a frog, Frogger! Act like one! The swimming controls are worst of all. It really doesn't feel like I'm in control. It's more like I'm only suggesting him where to go. Like I'm steering him in a general direction, but won't quite do what I want exactly. Like the jumping, it's way too loose and floaty. Oh no, not this again. Okay, look, I, I just want the coin. Please, can I, can I just swim into the coin? Is that so much to ask for? Can I please just do this incredibly basic action without it being a task and a half? Every time he jumps, it looks like he's about to take an explosive dump midair. Why does it sound like he's breaking his legs every time he lands? From any height too, no, that's just the landing sound. And you better get used to it because you're gonna hear that non-stop. I keep getting stuck on stuff too, like it happens all the time. Not even just in midair either, no, I've gotten stuck by literally just walking around. I'm not even joking, like are you seeing this? Why does this happen? Oh, and the camera is just as bad as the controls are. It can't go five minutes without clipping underground or getting stuck in a wall or just freaking out in general. And the camera controls? 
what camera controls. The right stick doesn't even do anything. You can click it in to enter a first person view, but tilting it does nothing. The camera controls can't even be bad because there are none. Oh, uh, no, sorry. You press the L2 button to recenter the camera. That's it. That's all you can do. This isn't an adventure RPG like Zelda. This is a platformer. There's faster action here and more vertical movement. You need to be able to control the camera. I want to be able to look up and down and all around, not just zip it in the general direction I'm looking in. And what's more, the game has combat. Oh good, combat. That's something platformers rarely get right. I think Rayman 2 and Ratchet and Clank are shining examples on how to do it well, but that's because those games understand that combat in a platformer should probably involve the same type of action and movement that platformers are known for. Otherwise, I find the mechanics don't really flow together. Jumping around to dodge projectiles, strafing left and right, navigating an open space as you return fire? That's awesome. Frogger at least tries to do it that way, but they mess it up so bad. The first problem, and this is hilarious, you can't move forward or backward when you're strafing, and the enemies don't have projectile attacks either. They don't just stand there and shoot at you like in Rayman or Ratchet. No, they're gonna run towards you, and since you can't back up, the axis of rotation quickly shrinks until you're zipping around in tiny circles and the camera implodes. You can also do a generic karate attack, which happens automatically when pressing the shoot button if an enemy's close to you, but the animations take way too long. It's nearly impossible to do it this way without taking any damage yourself. There's no rhyme or reason to it. The character models just mash against each other until somebody dies. You know how, like, kids smash their toys together to make two characters fight? That's the combat. There's also these magical runes you can use, uh, three in total, but they barely do anything. You can cast fire and ice to help defeat enemies, but I swear it barely helps at all. The most efficient way to take out these guys, it seems, is by standing somewhere they can't get to, entering first person, and just shooting at them. Remember Oblivion, where you could cheese the arena by standing up there and shooting down arrows? That's the entire game here, I'm not joking. Some of these enemies are freaking terrifying, too. I thought the shark from Banjo was scary, but I would have had some serious nightmares if I saw these things as a kid. And they're terrifying for the wrong reasons. It's not because they pose any threat to Frogger, no, they're easy as heck. It's because they look bizarre and horrible. The enemies can barely even land a scratch on you in this game. You have so much health, and there's not even really any consequence to dying anyway. You just respawn nearby without losing any progress at all. Well, <laughs> progress. There's not much progression in this game's levels, because the goal of most of them is just so... nothing. There, you do nothing. Your goal in any given level is always just to find something. Some levels are linear, with you reaching an end, but most levels are fairly open areas, Banjo and Mario style. It's always just a needle in a haystack. Find this key, or find this guy. It's usually one of those two. And while looking for these does require a solid amount of exploration, there's so little to do that you could beat each level in less than five minutes if you just know where to go. Imagine if Mario 64's levels were like, uh, okay, explore the level and find the one star. It's just sitting somewhere. Oh, you found it? Okay, level over. That's it. That's all there is to the level. That's what this game is like. The maps feel so lifeless, too. Most of them barely have any NPCs at all to populate the place with. Some of them barely even have any enemies, either. Instead, they just throw frog coins everywhere. But these frog coins are perhaps one of the most worthless collectibles on the damn planet. They can't give you extra lives. You're immortal, remember? So what do they do? Well, if you've collected enough, you can buy some concept art between levels. But one look at this game is probably enough to know that the concept art is not worth looking at. I don't mean to be rude to the artist or anything, but it's not good. So you have these gigantic levels with very little to do in them, and tons of worthless coins everywhere just to fill the empty space. It's like there's barely anything to do here. There's barely even any real platforming. Some levels have you jumping across platforms, but for the most part, these levels don't even seem like to have jumping as a central mechanic in mind. You just run around and look for the thing. It's pretty boring. The only level that I thought was sorta neat is this one here where some Frankenstein looking dude kidnaps you and you gotta find a secret way out of his castle. You find a hidden exit in the room you're stuck in and you change the time of the great clock to trick the door into opening since it's scheduled to open at a certain time. The visual design screams bootleg Rayman 2. The texturing seems to be somewhat similar and it's super vibrant and fairy tale like but the textures are really oversaturated and not very detailed. The amount of blinding bright green on the screen at any given time 
time is almost nauseating if the camera didn't make you sick enough already. That's gotta be one of the worst waterfalls I've seen on PS2. I mean, hell, plenty of N64 waterfalls look way better than this. Oh lord, the fairies! Ugh, they look so gross! It looks like, it looks like something out of a Tim Burton movie, like an evil henchman character that you're supposed to be disgusted by. But no, they're fairies, here to be magical and fun! I hope you like looking at them because you're gonna be doing a lot of it. Whenever you go to Fairy Village, they're all just standing there in a straight line, perfectly spaced apart, staring you down. Oh, what is this supposed to be, a cult? Am I gonna die? Like, what is this? You need to give old Bruiser some honey first. I don't like that. I, I don't want to have to think about the implications this big ugly blue bear is trying to suggest. A magic bag, and I don't need me. <laughs> I swear to God, every line of dialogue in this game is written as grossly and as uncomfortably as possible. A lot of times, characters just say things that make me really uneasy. A stinky biggie? <laughs> Do you need to go to the bathroom, little fella? What the hell is going on with the text? It's freaking out. It looks like a, like a physics error, but it's text. How does this happen? Hey, stop that! The enemy dialogue makes no sense. Ooh. He's not so tough. I know frog foo! <laughs> you ever have an enemy walk up to you and go hello? Hello! Ow! This guy here is T-posing! He's coming after me, but he's in a T-pose! They can damage you after you kill them, too. Sometimes I'll kill an enemy and its hitbox must linger or something because I'll take damage even though there's nothing there anymore. You're not so tough! One thing that really tripped me up was this part right here. Uh, you gotta get a key for this door, but after I got the key, the door would not open. I started to wonder if maybe I missed it, maybe I didn't get it, but no, I did. I went back and double checked, yet the door remained locked. I ran around in circles for like 20 freaking minutes wondering what the hell to do, until I tried mashing a circle button near the door for the sixth time, and then voila, it just opens. It turns out the input is just really touchy. You have to be standing in the exact spot, and there's no prompt either, so you have no way of knowing whether or not this door is supposed to open. Oh right, I forgot to talk about the green rune. This one makes you go faster, which is actually incredibly helpful, because it means you beat the game faster. Any item that makes you have to play this game for less time is great in my books. But not even that can save you sometimes, like here. Why do I have to wait for her to walk this slow? Why did she take this long? Why does she take this long? Why is she taking this long? Please, walk faster, walk faster. I swear to god, I'm gonna blow my own dick off with a rocket launcher. The game's got this running gag of Frogger finding a princess just for it to be the wrong one. The first princess he learns of turns to be the name of a big boat. The second one's a fairy princess, and then the princess of the undead. I think it's supposed to be an homage to, you know, your princess is another castle or whatever, I guess. Okay, I've clowned on the game long enough. You guys know I tend to be one of the more optimistic reviewers out there. I like to see if even the worst of games have at least one interesting idea, so let's see what good I can take from this game. That's rich coming from even me, huh? I'm sorry guys, I'm really at loss here. I really am. I really cannot bring myself to say anything good about this game. Uh, duh, 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 this, this boat looks kind of cool. And again, this level was kind of cool. I don't know, this is one of those rare cases. It's the kind of game that's so bad, there's really nothing that even I can take from this. Every jump, every obstacle, every level, NPC, every line of dialogue, it's so consistently unlikable that Honestly, I'm impressed. I really think the only way you could make this game worse is if we're also frustrating, but luckily it's so easy a monkey could beat it. There's absolutely zero challenge here. It's really boring, but at the very least, I guess I'd prefer that over it being frustrating, but that's also just because I have to finish the game to review it, and I understand that perspective is unique from most. It's kind of hard to say which Frogger game is worse, the one that mechanically functions but is crushingly frustrating, or the one that is quite easy to finish, but doesn't function properly at all. Objectively speaking, I think The Great Quest is worse, but I definitely had a worse time finishing this one. Whichever one truly is worse, that's up to you. So I guess we'll talk about that ending now. I'm gonna put up a spoiler warning here, as much as I doubt anybody's gonna care, but you never know. After three dead ends, Frogger finally arrives at the castle. This final level really sucks. Everything looks exactly the same. It's really hard to navigate. And remember that door problem I had before? Every single door in the castle is also like that. Again, I thought that perhaps I missed something. These things would not open. But after revisiting them all for a fourth time, mashing away at circle, they just decided to 
open. The very final part has you climbing this tall tower, which is a fairly cool set piece, but it's still pretty damn confusing. You'll hop between towers as you find a way to continue ascending, but the level is designed to loop around with this deceptive string of coins that leads back down to where you were before. Look at that, isn't that really inviting? The way the castle caves in, it draws your attention. It looks like that's where you're supposed to go. But no, if you jump down there, you fall into a trap. This is where I was before, and now I have to spend all the time climbing all the way back up. What a pain in the ass. The final boss is really bizarre. It's this character that's never mentioned or even alluded to the entire game. You just show up and this dweeb with glasses you've never seen before is trying to get the princess. The whole game, there's no main villain, but then at the very end, it just decides it has one. It's so funny because if you think about it, this guy's here for the exact same reason Frogger is, yet the game's just gonna pretend that Frogger's in the right even though he's doing the same thing. This boss fight is insultingly easy too. You just strafe and shoot and eventually he dies. After being rescued, she looks at his disgusting Shrek-looking ass and goes, that's hot, and actually kisses him. Are you joking? I'm sorry, but I don't buy it. It's the most plot-convenient crap ever. But then again, if humans all looked as ugly as this, they probably wouldn't have terribly high standards. Yeah, I know, I know, this happened because Frogger wished for it, but man, I don't know, I just really did not want this entitled, disgusting little frog to get that kiss. He just decides out of the blue that he gets to be a prince. He doesn't earn it. There's no character development through this plot. No, he just decides he gets what he wants and the writers go, yeah, I hate it. Think about this too, like, Mario saves people out of his own desire to do good, right? But Frogger, no. He wished for the situation. He had to deliberately put somebody in danger to save them. And even then, he's only saving them to get what he wants, not because he actually cares about people in need of rescue. That is pretty selfish. What an unlikable character, man. It was bad enough that he's annoying and uncomfortably strange the entire game, but once I really put some thought into his motivations, I realized that it's kind of messed up. After the credits, we see snippets of Frogger's new exciting life, battling foes and saving the day again and again, which I admit is sort of a nice way to show that in the end, he really did get the best out of his wish. No idea why he's a frog again, though. Oh, was the kiss only temporary? Did he turn back into a frog? Did the princess marry him in the frog form? I don't even want to think about it. And uh, that is Frogger the Great Quest. This game sucks. Like, it's terrible. Top to bottom, there is nothing good about this game, which honestly is something I'm having a hard time comprehending. Usually I can find something, but not here. Well, at the very least, I guess I could say it falls closer into the so bad it's good category, uh, similar to Sonic 06, you know, the kind of bad that's fun to laugh at. You could play through this with some friends over, and I could see you having a good time laughing at all the glitches and the bad writing. I guess if my tone throughout this video was telling of anything, it's that I didn't have an awful time playing it. It is a horrible game, but it did get some pretty good laughs out of me. This game is pretty worthless too, it is dirt cheap, so it's the kind of game where you're gonna be at a pawn shop with a buddy, you're both gonna see it for five bucks on the shelf. If you're gonna look at each other, you're gonna go, oh no, we gotta play this, dude. But of course, as a AAA video game, this is downright unacceptable. Konami should feel embarrassed, honestly, and they must have been a laughing stock for releasing this. This game is Frogger in name only. It has nothing to do with the series. It doesn't even have the same look or feel or even a single move even remotely similar to the old games. Take a look at Pac-Man World. It is a rebooted version of that series that plays very different, but there's still tons of stuff there to remind you that it's Pac-Man. They figured out how to make the dots work, what to do with the ghosts, how to implement the fruit. All of the trappings of classic Pac-Man are there. They're just recontextualized to make sense as a platformer. But this doesn't resemble Frogger even in the slightest. You could replace this character with literally anybody and it wouldn't make a difference. The only thing connecting this to the series is that truck on a shirt. A little nod to the original, but not enough to call this a Frogger game. If you want to play the real Frogger 3, play Zapper. I reviewed that game a couple of years ago and while I did enjoy it, my verdict at the end of the day was that it was simply a Frogger clone, but now that I have the context for why it's a Frogger clone, it turns out that it wasn't really a clone after all in a sense. It kind of was the real Frogger all along. This is an all-time low for the series. It's pretty much the Sonic 06 of Frogger. It really is, but uh, luckily it's only up from here. The next games will return to the tile hopping gameplay from before, which good thing too, because Swappy's Revenge left me wanting a whole lot more of that. Next time we'll be taking a look at the Game Boy Advance Frogger games, including the port of the Great Quest. There's a whole world of portable Frogger games out there, and I am so ready to hop on in. So I'll see you guys next time with Temple of the Frog, The Lost Wand, and more.